Sanders, who brought you RuPaul's Drag Race and Million Dollar Listing. This is World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Uh, welcome to another edition of the Wow Report. I'm Sandra Bailey, co-founder of World of Wonder. Here, as always, with the amazing Tom Campbell, creative, our creative director. Yes, Tom. hello. Hello. Chief creative director. G uh, chief, Don't yes. you forget it. Chief creative director. <laughs> And of course, literary legend and sensation, <laughs> editor oh of the Wow Report, James St. James. Hello, darlings. Good James. afternoon. Hello, hello. So, you know, every week we count down the top 10 things that made us go, wow. wow. But this week, well, we're doing that. Yeah. But this week we're having a little theme. We are I counting. I love a theme show. <laughs> love a theme, love a theme. <laughs> counting down the top 10 girl groups of all time oh. of all time yeah, well, well, well uh, i think make us go wow right yes of all time that made of us all go time wow. you know it's a very mean, long title this week <laughs> <laughs> but there are hundreds and hundreds of girl groups to, to choose from and to winnow it down to just 10 was really a challenge you can check out these stories and more as always on the wow report world of wonder.net slash radio andy where you can also see radio in living color right <laughs> We have faces for radio. Coming from our Hollywood Boulevard studio. Yes. I'm so look, without further ado, number 10. Number 10. Okay, girl groups. Yeah. Here's my, I have to get philosophical for a minute, then I'll get on topic again, which is one of the factors that seems to be consistent with girl groups is they come together, they burn hot, you fall in love with them, and then they break up. They can't stay together. There's some exceptions, but they can't stay together. And there, there's something when three girls are singing or dancing together, oftentimes it's three. It's just, there's some kind of perfection. There's some kind of symmetry. Uh, there's yeah, some, uh, the power of three. Beauty. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. The, and, the triangle is the strongest shape. And sometimes right. they're brought together in really contrived ways or forced together. And sometimes they've, you know, had long time. But there's something. That's, I always love a female vocalist. I love a girl group so much. And so this number 10 right. sort of represents the girl groups that come and go so fast. And it's Wilson Phillips. Oh. Hmm. They did, <laughs> they did <laughs> come and go pretty fast, didn't they? But I have to say, no, first, they have an amazing backstory, right? Because they are rock and roll royalty. Right. They are the- uh, uh, Each and every one of them. Yes, uh, Carney and Wendy Wilson right. are the daughters of Brian Wilson. Beach Boy. Beach Boy, genius, mad genius. And oh. China Phillips is the daughter of John Phillips and Michelle Phillips from the Mamas and the Papas. So in the in 1990, when they they came onto the scene, th that was amazing. And they're, they had more than one song, but the one song that seems to have lasted forever. Uh, th their legacy song. That we were singing all the way down in the yeah, elevator, yeah. Um, and we'll spare you, <laughs> is, um, is Hold On. Hold on, <laughs> go one more day, uh, things, things will go, go your way. Oh, things will go See, my recollection of that is the video. I remember oh. the video so clearly yes. with the way they, I mean, this is a, a cruel point, but they seem to position Carney yes. always like in the background. Like they, they weren't sort of, they were, it was shame of her. There was a little, it was the first one that was better and, and, and she was, but they were at the beach and Carney was yes. wearing black, but there was something very empowering for this girl group because Carney was kind of one of the mm. first big girl, girl group band people. Mm. Um, and the video is so beautiful. It was. And, and it's, you, wait, hold on, you know, but for 27 years, it has been a staple at every <laughs> wedding I, I have ever been to. And it does sort of, it, it does look great a little after a while, yeah. maybe. <laughs> but their first album was as big as an album can be. They had yeah. like three hit singles off of it. Yeah. And their second album charted well, but no hit singles. Mm. And after that, China went solo. Now they have reunited as a girl group. They will reunite oh, after right. they break your heart, after they leave. I don't want to get into it. But um, and they did reunite for Bridesmaids, which is what the high point of the uh, of their actually, movie. Rarely does a girl group or any group reunite and have a, a higher point than when mm -hmm. they were together. But <laughs> that Bridesmaids, right? Because I've said it before, once and I'll say it again. Bridesmaid is the best movie ever made in the history of mankind. <laughs> That's quite a claim. <laughs> I believe it. Become, I do love Bridesmaids. I mean, I saw Bridesmaids the first time and laughed my ass off. And then I, I was once, I was on a plane and somebody had their little like personal viewer and they were watching Bridesmaids and I kept looking at it. And every time I looked at it and looked, I was like, that's 
the most amazing scene. And then I would look away. To, I look, that's the most amazing scene. And the end of that movie, the thing that topped everything was Wilson Phillips coming back together and singing Hold On, right. which is a song that's an, it's kind of a guilty pleasure because you're not supposed to like it. I did like it. It's a good song. Well, I, you know, I, it really got me through a period in, uh, what is it, 90? I was, out, I was living in um, Michigan. I had, I'd left New York. I went to Miami. I went to L.A. And then I was in this cabin in the middle of nowhere in, with, during the winter. And I was writing. And I was trying to write a book. And that well, song was the song that, like, just pushed me through. Were and, you writing uh, Disco Bubbles? No, no. I was writing um, Diary of a Mad Queen oh, that no. never got published. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like my first attempt at trying to write long form, uh, and I just sat in this cabin in the middle of the woods, and I wrote and listened to Wilson Phillips. James, I know there's pain. <laughs> <laughs> and there was pain at that Why time. Why do you lock yourself up in these chains? And I did. Chains. I was locking myself in a cabin. <laughs> Nobody oh, can change um, your life except for you. I, I'm, just a little tag is that in doing a little bit of research, China admitted on Dancing with the Stars, because they all mm. end up on Dancing with the Stars, darling, that she, uh, mm. the three of them wrote that song. So I hope they still get a lot of change for that. Uh, in, in response to her getting over her drug and alcohol addiction. Oh, well, so it, And I was getting over my drug and alcohol addiction. There you right go. There. Well, okay. <laughs> so, uh, Wilson kind Phillips, <laughs> most recently reunited for the finale of NBC's new Celebrity Apprentice. Ooh. Who knew? Oh, with, with Schwarzenegger. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes, that's yes. okay. You get their music on iTunes, of course. So, that leaves us now to number nine. nine. Number nine. Number nine, and this is one of those ones that I apologize in advance Why? to Fenton because what? he's not going to know what the hell we're talking about. You and I are going to be able to get These are it. my favorite ones. <laughs> okay, my favorite girl group of all time is the first girl group I ever heard, and that's Josie and the Pussycats. Okay? Oh, jo okay. <laughs> that's not what it says here on the script. <laughs> I've, I, I've, <laughs> I've thrown the script out. I've, I've taken it in my rogue. own hand. Josie I've gone rogue. Actually, I do know a little because I saw the movie, so we'll come back to that. Oh, well, okay. No, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Well, here we go. Yeah. Because there have been many iterations of Josie and the Pussycats over the years. There was a comic book. There was the movie in the 90s. They're on Riverdale now as an African-American uh, girl group. But we're talking, I am, about, we're the talking about the cartoon. Okay, 1971, oh. 1972. And what it was, it was so brilliant. It was like Scooby-Doo uh, Redux. Re Redux? Re yes. Re Redux. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it, it, it was... Uh, I know Scooby-Doo. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and wasn't there an and Ar wasn't Archie's? Wasn't that part? Wasn't it part of the Archie's? Well, it time started period? in the sixties. It started with the Archie's, but then they spun off yeah. on their own, right? Okay. And they were a girl group. And then there was also Josie and the Pussycats in Outer Space, which was even better, where they got lost in space and had to try and find their way back to Earth. And their their spaceship was really phallic. Yes, it was. It was long, was. the big bulbous. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. But anyway, <laughs> um, Josie and the Pussycats <laughs> were a band that toured the world, and each week they sort of fell into these misadventures and and spy capers and things like that. Mm. And every episode episode ended with a chase scene that was put to music and it was like new, they're, they're, a new song was debuted every single week and this music I had all the albums I played the yeah. albums nonstop. <laughs> when I got a tape recorder for Christmas I would sit next to the TV and tape record the like songs that. and take them to school the next day and play it for everybody in the schoolyard yes. right um, the uh, Josie, the, there was Josie who was the redheaded and she was sort of uh, very together. Then there was um, Valerie, who interestingly enough was the first black female ca cartoon character in history. I did not know that. Yeah. Um, I there remember. Was, yeah. Mm. And, and, and I didn't realize it at the time. It wasn't until I was doing a little research last night <laughs> that I discovered <laughs> that fact. Um, and then there was Melody, who was the bubble headed bleach blonde, yes. and she was the one that I wanted to be. There was also there was, uh, Alexander and Alexander, who were the tour managers. And Alexander had the white skunk, skunk stripe, and she was evil, and she had the evil cat. Remember? Um, <laughs> you think that would be a giveaway to them? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but the whole the whole reason I was really so attracted to them was they had those leopard print. Uh, 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 Sort of high cut like onesies or, or not onesies but um, uh, uh, leotards. Uh, yeah, yeah. They, they had leopard print leotards that had tails and they had the little cat ears. May I sing the theme song? What do we? What was it? Oh. Because the, I think that honestly, when I go back to look at my old club kid pictures and I'm in leotards and everything like that and carrying lunch boxes because I was never allowed to have a lunch box as a child. Oh. So I think I was reliving like wait, my, wait, wait, my 1971 you fantasy. You weren't allowed to have a lunch box. No, Why I had not? to have hot That's... lunch every single oh. day from kindergarten to 12th grade. Wow. And every single <laughs> friend is... had lunch boxes. And that's why when I moved to New York, I started collecting lunch boxes because I was never allowed to have them as a child. So I used them as a purse for like 10 years. 
It's fantastic. That's anyway. fantastic. No, these are the things that <laughs> I, I do believe that those first television images are so yeah, powerful. Yeah, totally. I have a question, though, because I... Josie and the Pussycats. So, Gem and the Holograms, who comes first? In oh, this? well, what? Josie. What? Okay. Gem so and the Holograms wasn't until the 90s. Uh, really? Yeah. Oh, no, it was the 80s. It was totally, yeah, it was the 80s. Same thing. Oh, yeah. 80s, 90s. I have to do, it was, it was Josie and, and the Pussycats. Long tails and, 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 and the ears to match. match. Oh. And then, and then when they went out of space, it was the Pussycats in outer space. Josie's in <laughs> outer space. And she, remember, Melody had bleep. It was a little space monster. Yes. They went bleep, 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 bleep. Yes. And uh, the every and they were kept. They would always land on different planets and have like adventures with the different aliens and stuff. Yes. It was so good. It really was. It was the best TV we've you ever had. You saw the movie years later. Yes. Did you see the movie? The I, well, movie? I wouldn't sully my my memory. <laughs> <laughs> what What was your impression? I have no recollection. <laughs> Uh, that says it all. <laughs> it's, it's, it's nonsense. But it makes me wonder. Number eight. Do you think there's any connection between Josie and the Pussycats and my number eight, which is Pussycat Dolls? Oh, I believe probably. Mm -hmm. she, Nicole Scherzinger was probably our age, and she was probably very heavily influenced by she Josie. Just, she just turned off the radio right now. She's like, I am not your <laughs> age. <laughs> well, she was probably Ish. a child Ish. in the 70s. And they, these, these cartoons, you know, repeated ad infinitum all through the 70s. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that she But the Pussycat Cat dolls were founded by Robin Anton. It was definitely well, our, our, our era. Well, exactly. And that, that was uh, – because I think anything about a, a girl group or a boy group uh, is the fact that the, behind them is a controller. Yes. I mean, we, we like to call them the fat controller from Thomas the Tank Engine stories. You know, the fat <laughs> controller who runs all the trains. I don't have a child. I don't know, the, I don't know Thomas the Tank Engine. Uh, we, should do, we should do a special episode all about <laughs> children's <laughs> stories. But the fat controller – runs the yard and runs all the trains and all the trains are at his behest. I mean, he's, he's like the Monopoly man in Monopoly, you know. Uh, point being that these manager Svengali types yes. put these bands together. And to me, that's like the definition of a, of a girl group or a boy band is that they've been constructed. It right. can't be an organic natural thing it has to be these aren't mm. friends who have been who no, have been practicing no. the garage for 10 years Sometimes. exactly and, uh, and and robin anton we should we should well, mention is a long is a good time a long time friend of wow she's she's somebody that has been an la legend forever and oh, ever and ever wildly talented and such an incredible vocalist yes a actually and the whole family i mean the family should be their own show because she has a brother, Jonathan Anton, who had a show. Well, we're Blow talking about out. the singer. You're talking about the person who founded them, which is Robin Anton. Yes, yes. I'm sorry. Oh, I was talking about. I was. I was on this thing about the fat controllers, right. and normally. In and fact, Robin is not fat. No, no. Normally they are men, but in this case, the person who put the pussycat yes. dolls together is a woman. Yes. Robin Anton, right? Choreographer mm -hmm. extraordinaire. Choreographer extraordinaire. Talent from a very talented family. One brother is a director. The other brother uh, is a hairstylist. Had a show Blowout. Jonathan from oh, Blowout, yeah. Anton. Yes. And then the other one directed uh, Burlesque. Yes. Oh, yeah. Burlesque. Well, the and it gets even crazier because <laughs> the mother used to have an antique shop. On Melrose. I remember that. I remember that shop. So yes. it's this sort of Uber. And I think she's British, actually. I think I you're th right. I think she is. So anywho, that's why I'm talking about the Pussycat Dolls. But I actually also love the music. And I think they had a very, a very extraordinary avant-garde sound. I yeah. mean, a very, like, bold sampling. You know, I mean... Um, well, give me some... I can't even remember oh, any well, of their songs. Don't you wish your boyfriend was uh, hot like, like me. me? And that's the other thing. It has this sort of <laughs> Egyptian... <laughs> Uh, Lawrence well, of Arabia, but it's really feel good to dance, to the, really yeah. good to strip to yes. all the strippers. Loosen up my buttons, buttons baby. Uh -huh. Every yeah. stripper yeah. in America dances to <laughs> Pussycat Dolls and that, music. That song Beep. I think the song Beep is the most brilliant yes. song. It I don't know the, that. It has this huge sample from ELO, Evil Woman. Oh well, dee, there you go. Dee, 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 yeah. dee. <laughs> and it's like the whole the, the lyrics are incredibly clever. It's like you're looking at my beep, and it's this. It, they're the, bleeping the dirty words, they're bleeping and the, the song's called Beep. It's really cool. Wow. I also so like, when I grow up, I want to be famous, mm. I want to be a star, I want to be in movies. Well, that's the other key thing I think about any kind of girl band or boy band is that they need to sing about their prefabricatedness. And I think, you know, when I go up, I want to be a star, drive pink car, drink. It's a great, a very catchy They song. were kind of the last rush of, of great videos, you yeah. know, and the only 
resentment I have, again, is that they broke up. Like they come together and, and you think this is it, this is my new Supremes, this is my new Destiny's Child, and then it must be really hard to be in a girl group. It must be really hard to like. Well, let's, I mean, it's, it's hard to be in, a, in a, a boy band as well. I mean, like every band yeah. eventually breaks up because there's just too many egos. And once you become famous. Guys, can we make a promise right now? <laughs> we'll to never break here. up the band. Oh, I've already got a, a, a side gig <laughs> going. James has his solo career. I am in the middle, you guys. <laughs> Hi. But the Pussycat Dolls, yes, they did break up. And did you remember they also had a, a brief moment in Vegas? They had a whole little mini casino. Yeah, it was I think like it a... was at the Cosmopolitan, or was it at Caesars? It was Wait, at Caesars. they had their own casino? Yes, they had their own tables. Uh, it was PCD, yes. Yes. That's hot. Mm -hmm. That's and a way to make some money, isn't it? No, it didn't last long. So. But that's how you cash in. They could just stay together, and then they'll reunite, and it won't be the same. But that, they that's... haven't reunited yet. No, they? and it's no. one of the groups where you really only know Nicole's name, right? I don't no. know. The other, bigger fans might know. But I love their music, and it, it we've good. used it a lot as lip sync. I think we used three songs: "Buttons," "Don't You Wish Your Boyfriend Was Hot Like Me," and "When I Grow Up." When I, I grow have up. lip sync songs on yeah. Drag Race because they're. See, I don't know delicious. where I was oh, in my life, James. and it just it didn't make make a, it that didn't imprint very... on me. You might have been in a cabin in Michigan. <laughs> no, no, I was no? a cabin in my mind. <laughs> a cabin in my mind. <laughs> a cabin of my soul. Well, do yourself a favor and put those onto your iPod or wherever you, uh, however you listen to music, because they'll get you going. They're yeah. Fun. Oh yes, they will. So we have to take a quick break. I uh, have a question for you guys. Uh -oh. Our trivia question is, okay, so lead singer Nicole Scherzinger, mm -hmm. that's not her real name, is it? <gasps> what? Who Why? changed their name to Nicole Scherzinger? Who changed their name to Scherzinger? <laughs> her real name? We'll have the answer after the break. You're listening to The Wire Report on Radio Andy. Oh, my God. Look at him. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Welcome back to The Wow Report. This week, we're counting down top 10 girl bands of all time that make us go. Wow. wow. <laughs> uh, I'm Fender Bailey, co-founder of World of Wonder, here with Tom Campbell, James St. James, and our millennial producer, Blake. Hello, guys. Hi. 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 How are you? I love this show. I love girl groups. <laughs> so before the break, I asked you about the Pussycat Dolls lead singer, Nicole Scherzinger. Scherzinger? Scherzinger. Close enough. And so it's not her real name, which is extraordinary because that is such an amazing Why name. Why would you, Scherzinger is just so random. I'm going to say she shared her name with a famous Nicole and therefore had to change it to something else. I'm going to say her real name is Nicole Richie. Or Nicole Kidman. <laughs> um, I'm going to say it's actually, you know how they shorten their names? Yep. I'm going to say it was Scherzinger, Sher Lada Dooley, um, Schmidt and Klein. Very smart, Jay. You're completely right. <laughs> I, 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 I'm looking through my papers. Because I give up. <laughs> I give up. Okay. What does James always want? Okay. So, Nicole, actually, Nicole is, right. that is the authentic piece of it. But then it's Nicole Prascovia Eli Kalani Valiente. Isn't that amazing? I mean, which, why would which, you change which that? Which makes perfect sense that you'd go break that down to Scherzinger. Scherzinger. I wonder if Scherzinger is like Smith in Russian or something. Maybe, or maybe it's an anagram. We okay, let's keep going with the countdown. We've got to number, because I can't really do numbers, seven. Yes. Number seven. The Pointer Sisters. Oh. oh. Now, they break the, a lot of the girl group rules because, A, they're related. They're mm -hmm. sisters. They uh -huh. truly are sisters. And I think that's allowed. They were together. They weren't Svengali'd. Oh. They have an authentic background. They're from Oakland, California. They sang in church. Originally, it was Anita, who had the squeaky kind of I'm so excited voice. June, who had the jump for my love kind of soul voice. Ruth, who had the low voice, you know, automatic voice. And then there was Bonnie who was with them in the early 70s. Before they had hits, they did background for Grace Slick, Boz Skagg, Sylvester, Bette Midler. Um, and I was looking up a little bit, because just to refresh my memory, but I know the Pointer Sisters so well, I actually worked for them at one point. Um, you did? Yeah, the, uh, at Gal and Maury, they, oh. were, they, were, they were a client. But um, way back in the 80s, when they were hot, hot, hot. But the um, iTunes says, the Pointer Sisters were as chameleonic. Oh, I can't understand. Chameleonic? <laughs> as David Bowie. What? They had they had country hits. They did soul hits. They did jazz. They did blues. They they, they performed at the um, Grand Ole Opry, and they had massive back to back to back to back four number one hits huh. in the eighties. And that's why most of us know. Was them, that right? their red hot? That was that but, wasn't a comeback phase. Or no, that but, was their 
No, but they were they were big in the '70s. I remember oh, they were okay. ubiquitous. Well, but they started in the off 70s. and they were like they were like early. I remember them on the Carol Burnett show very early. They were hot. They came out in '72, '73 with an album. It was the four of them, and they were like into vintage '40s looks. But they were also like LaBelle. They were also like weren't not they? yet, not yet. Okay, at th- okay. that point, they were very like retro. And they did um, that great song, "Yes We Can, Yes We Can, No We Can, Can, right, Yes uh, We Can, yeah, Can, uh-huh. Great Gosh Almighty." And they also did "Bet You Got a Chick on the Side." Sure, you got a chick. I know you got a chick on the side. I this is great. Remember. Yeah. It's a great mm-hmm. rap song, and 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 they had those rap albums in the seventies. <laughs> yes, it was. What? They were so ahead of themselves. What? So then, what happened in the eighties? So in in seventy seven, they hooked up with Richard Perry, the producer, who oh. most recently has been with Jane Fonda. He right. produced Carly Simon. He's like one of the amazing seventies eighties producers, and he, they had a string of single success. They never had an album success. He's so shy. That's why I love oh. my baby. I want a man with a slow hand. Yeah, oh. these are big and 70s, yeah. Fire, which yeah. is a Bruce Springsteen song. Oh. I mean, they would take the most unique, interesting songs and make huge hits out of them, but they were radio hits. They never had an album hit. And then mm. the, in 1983, they did a song that- For Footloose. No, oh. um, it was Beverly Hills Cop. Oh, and they put a Neutron dance in that. Oh, oh yeah. They all, and it was all. And this is when I first came to LA, which is so exciting. And I tried to work for Richard. It's Perry. so exciting. I'm so excited, which was used in every movie, Happy Movie trailer for about a decade. Yeah, you know, it was yeah. always mm-hmm. like, and then they hit the road. Bump, right. bump, 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 bump. But yeah. um, <laughs> on that album, at first was Jump for My Love, which used Jeez. footage from the '84 Olympics, all the athletes jumping, and they were just like jumping and being hot. And then they did. Mm. Uh, Automatic was, I think, the first single uh-huh. from that. And that was the first time we heard June, who has that big, low voice. And everybody thought, that's the Pointer Sisters? Because she's like, you know, no way to control it. It's totally automatic. All of my... You don't know oh this song? Oh, my God. I do, I yes. do. I remember. I, so but weird. I haven't heard it in 35 and I've years. I've never associated until... them all yeah. with the Pointer Sisters. I used to drive really fast. In the summer of 84, I was out look, trying to make myself something in L.A. I would drive really fast, and my friends would be furious. Like, Top stop. Down. But I'd be listening. I had a sunroof then. Mm-hmm. And I would be listening to the Pointer Sisters... Uh, 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 Jump album And my friends would go What? I'm like If we die listening To the Pointer Sisters We'll be just fine So I ended up working At Gallimore A few years later <laughs> They managed them That's so chameleonic And they had uh, uh, Their last big album Was Dare Me Baby make your move at you. Oh Make step across the line I don't remember that Yeah. But they got And it's funny Because when Sandy Gallon God rest his soul Signed them They kind of stopped Having hits But he <laughs> turned them Into I hope Millionaires Because they got Huge Caesars Contracts, uh-huh. and if you ever saw them, and they taught me, and they had the best show. I got to see their show in the '80s like five or six or seven times, and it was constantly entertaining. And Tony Chase did their costumes, which were always like the space age LaBelle kind of costumes. Yeah, yeah. They kind of moved without even, you know, like they, they danced with you just walking, and they couldn't really dance. But the power of three, they would walk, the put up their arms, three. and shake their booties, and the dancers would dress for themselves. And I realized if you have three women do something in unison, it looks like dancing. Well, I just <laughs> have to try in here because we never talk about RuPaul on the show as you know but <laughs> when we produced RuPaul's album Star Booty and we were talking about what was going to be on the cover Ru was like we had a picture and he was like no 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 three power of three so there's three Ru's yes that's and right and it's so good I mean it's like yes. Diana it's like the you know they, they like still perf- June still performs with her grandchildren they were on RuPaul's oh. Drag Race. June, b- baby June, sister June sadly passed away. And sister Bonnie, who left the group in the 70s, had a solo hit. Um, Wait, there was baby June and mama June? No, just baby June. Mama <laughs> June is a whole different thing. <laughs> and um, uh, um, um, but, but Bonnie had some kind of breakdown. And she had that uh, Heaven Must Have Sent You <sighs> disco single in the 70s. Okay. But anyway, if, if for those of you who aren't familiar with the Pointer Sisters, check them out on iTunes and things of that nature. I've just spilt coffee on my T-shirt. Can you believe that? <laughs> it's a new T-shirt, too. <laughs> oh, my God. T-shirt. This is why we have the video in. cameras. Like, I just, just getting wet now. Well, should I? Do but that, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. No, keep going. No, are you going to talk? Are you going to say I'm something? So, I'm, I'm talking. Am okay. I not talking? I'm talking. Yes. We got to move on from the point of sisters. Yeah. To number six. six. Thank you. <laughs> number six. Number six. Oh my God, the Go Go's, you guys. The Go Go's. 
I have to first of all I have to back up a little bit because okay. in the early eighties when there were like three cable stations, remember like you, you would get a cable package and yeah. you had like there were three channels yep. on it. And one of those was USA. And USA had a show called Night Flight. Night Flight. Yes. yes. Oh, and it was God. on from twelve until five o'clock in the morning and it had like experimental videos, it had like yeah. uh, cult movies like Reefer Madness, and it had a show called New Wave Theater that I I gush about all the time. New Wave Theater was on at three o'clock in the morning. It was live from the mask. No, it wasn't live, but it was from. It was filmed at the mask here at mm. World of Wonder. Oh, the mask in the yes, basement. In the basement. It was filmed in the basement. Well, we have to explain. Yeah. Well, it was. It was a, it was a punk club. It was the first punk club yes. in L.A. And they always had like uh, Dead Kennedys and Circle Jerks and the Germs and Butthole Surfers. Dobby, Dobby, and the Crash. Jar- Jar- Jarby Crash from, Jarby from the Germs. Thank yes, he was, was gay. He was so cute and everything like that. Oh. But mm-hmm. one night they had a band on called the Go Go's, and they were these hardcore punk girls. And they were like, they came on and they just thrashed into the like. And I loved them and I was obsessed with them. And I was trying to find out everything I could, of course, but there was no internet or anything like that. Right. And then a year later, out comes Beauty and the Beast, which is and the beat. Yeah, no, no, no. Beauty. <laughs> and out comes Beauty and the Beat, uh. and it's like this pop perfect. Perfection. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, literally, they were like the California new wave. They were they, they were so fresh and so fun, and they had all those rough edges of the earlier mm, punk stages yes. was gone. Their songs, um, uh, 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 Our Lips Are Sealed. Our Lips Are oh. Sealed. We Got the Beat from yeah. that first album. This town. This town is our town. <laughs> it's not it's so glamorous. glamorous. <laughs> Bet you wish here. You wish you lived here, too. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway. Um, uh, so they really held their own against the oncoming onslaught of the British invasion. You know, there was like your rhythmics yes. and, and all those people, right. you know, uh, talk, talk and uh, heaven 17 and everybody that we started seeing in America, but they held their own and they were like the American version of yeah. all that. And they are the soundtrack of my high school. I just, every single one of those, that whole album is, is magic. Afterwards they had another album, uh, uh, vacation. Vacation. V a c a t i o n. That's Connie Francis. Oh, but <laughs> vacation. All I'll I ever wanted. wanted. <laughs> with the video with her, with oh, her. I'm so old. Oh, oh my god. Yeah. Yes. Right. And it was um. I that was one of the first concerts I ever went to, and they were playing with Flock of Seagulls. I just absolutely loved it. Yeah. Oh. But then. Cut to 20 mm. years later, mm. and well, they break up, and they, there's all yeah, sorts of together, drama, and up, Melinda right, has yeah. hits, and blah, 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 blah. But then 20 years later, I'm here at World of Wonder, and I'm down in the basement, and I start to notice that there's graffiti all over the walls that says, Belinda sucked my dick, and, you know, Karen <laughs> Valentine is a whore, and, like, all this, like, graffiti uh, th- from when they were performing oh. here, and Go-Go's and everything like that. Well, cut to a few years ago, and the Go-Go's are getting their star on yeah. the Walk of Fame right, right in front. I can see it. Right there, there. Oh my God. yes, right there. Yep. and there was it was a huge ceremony. And afterwards, they came upstairs and asked if we would give them a tour of the basement because they hadn't been to the mask in 25, 30 years. And so we, Theron and I, took them down, so showed them. We had a camera and everything, and we showed them all the graffiti, and they loved it. They were just they were laughing hysterically. They were crying. They were. It was like it was this real emotional it's moment. Where it all for them. For it's them. where it and all they started. Just just gotten their star. They uh, just left the ceremony. Literally, 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 there was a crowd of people this following them. Into, yeah, it? I mean, it's like amazing. So we have the video of that. Right? We do we'll have the put video it on the yeah. Rao report. And I'm interviewing them the whole time, and it was this whole sort of full circle moment where yeah. I was trying not to be like the fourth. If I could go back in time and tell the 14 year old me that I would someday like be standing in a room, tell it, you know, showing Belinda Carlisle around. It just it was really fantastic. And I say once again, my resentment is they broke up. Their last hit single and the, one of their best songs and videos was Head Over Heels. Head Over Heels. Man. Where do I, I go? go? Head <laughs> over <here>. <laughs> 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 anyway. And then, but then Belinda, you know, had um uh what was her Mad About You? Mad about you. And mad about place you. On Earth. Oh, it's yeah, yeah, heaven is a place of great. Heaven, yes. Oh, heaven is a place on earth. <laughs> oh wow. Oh god. Just I mean, literally that is my childhood right there. My teenage years, That's the formative right years. Number five. Well, for number five. I picked the Spice Girls, oh, right? Oh, of course. They were formed in 1994. They were, it was, um, they were formed by uh, Simon Fuller, I think, I want to say. Yeah, or Simon I Cowell. Think, uh, th- no, no, it wasn't Simon Cowell. I get um, all the Simons mixed up. I know. Yeah, it was Simon Fuller. Okay. Yeah, Simon, Simon Cowell's sort of arch rival. Simon Rex. Oh. Simon Fuller, yes. 
who went on to create Pop Idol, which became American Idol. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, yes, that's right. So uh, they were formed in 1994, took an ad out in the newspaper. Actually, it wasn't him who took the ad out. Some other managers took the ad out, couldn't get arrested. They, uh, they auditioned 400, gu- uh, 400 girls, selected the band, demo tapes, everything, took them all around. No one wanted to sign them. The Spice Girls got fed up with it, and they sought out Simon Fuller. Wow. And then they became uber famous. I love them. I mean, I was not the right age to be a teeny bopper, but um, MTV was in the Spice Girls were in heavy rotation when MTV did this great is videos. What, wait, wait, uh, Wannabe was ninety nine or ninety eight. No, no, it was earlier than that. That was that first single. It yeah. just they just had their twentieth anniversary. So it was ninety seven. Mm. Yes, but that it was one, number one in thirty seven countries. And that video was just transfixing. Yes, it introduced all of them and then going uh, to the camera. Me, 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 me. I was always a, a um, scary Spice fan the most well really i thought she popped and i we've got to know mel b she's been on drag race she's kind of a force of nature i love her i was a ginger spice um i didn't uh, quite get sporty spice i did not like her very much there's a lot about us yeah i i liked um, what about posh spice i mean she's the one who's gone on to uh, the biggest is that your uh, solo career? i suppose so but she didn't seem to do much in the group no no no, no. it wasn't until <laughs> afterwards not that there's anything wrong with that no but you know, it, it really it wasn't until she married she, beckham and started right, being the fashion designer, queen and designer yes. and all that stuff she, that, feels to me like maybe she was carried by the other girls for a while. I'm thinking, maybe, like, did she maybe. have the good drugs? Was she, like, you know, what made her popular in the I group? think because every sort of super group yes. has one person who doesn't get that much attention, who's like, what are you doing here? Like, who no one really cares about right. but needs to make up the numbers. But Posh Spice got her revenge, I think. Yeah. But, you know, that the, my, one of my favorites, my favorite is uh, Spice Up Your Life. It's, yeah. I love that song. Wait, how does that one go? Um, Spice Up Your Life. Girls like, of the world. That's, that's the big stadium anthem song. Every that they boy, play every like, girl. They play at soccer games and yes, stuff. Yes, but yeah. you know, I, I sort of, one day I thought I, I sort of thought, did I really hear what I thought I heard? And so I went and looked up the lyrics, and I have to ask you, what you, it's like, Yellow Man in Timbuktu? That's a lyric? You can't say that. That's really no. Yellow man in Timbuktu. Wow, too. I'm turning my, I'm changing my mind about the Spice Girls. That's I right. I gotta shame them. They're Co- racist. Color for both me and you. Kung fu fighting, dancing queen, tribal spaceman, and all that's in between. Spice up your life, etc. But it's that is sort of a good line. lyric, though. That is sort of fun right there. If you say it fast enough, are you really offending anyone? Uh. <laughs> um, I think my favorite song was the um, I'm giving you everything where they're in the desert. Was yes. The desert With one? those uh, muscle cars. Yes. Also, that two becomes one where they're all like on a street and they're oh, all like. Oh, yeah. And it's all that slow motion thing. But I got to tell you, the Spice Wait, Girls. Wait, did they only have the one album, though? They had a couple. They had a couple, yeah. But it, Girl Power was amazing. I remember all the women I worked with at ABC at the time were bringing their daughters to see the Spice Girls because the girl power thing kind of pre Katy Perry and the thing that cements their legacy in my mind forever was was it the 2012 Olympics were they in London whatever when the Olympics were in London yeah, yeah, and yeah. they did the closing show and I kind of had it on I don't really watch the Olympics but I watched like the shows yeah. the halftime shows it, you, the Spice Girls did you see them on that I don't remember they had all these like British cars driving around on right. this huge stadium and all of a sudden like these Jaguars were replaced by little cabs oh I do little remember British that. cabs uh-huh. and then all of a sudden the cabs were replaced by bright bedazzled lit up cabs and then out came they stop out come the Spice Girls. They get on the roofs of the cabs, which have these like bars come up, and they're just and they're spinning like spice up the world, uh. but they're being driven at hundred miles per hour on little like cabs. And th- again, I w- I always underappreciated Posh, and they all looked great and they were all amazing. But Posh wore one of those short dresses in front and long in back. And when you're flying down a stadium at 90 miles, you have a tail that flutters oh, in the it's wind. It's a cape. It's, it's like, like Superman's yes! cape. And she looked remarkable. It's like the Rolls Royce insignia. <laughs> but I do remember <laughs> yeah. that um, that the negotiations to get Posh there were it in, was in, dip- and yes. that was when she was having she had either broke it, she'd left the band or whatever. But yeah. to have her come back and do the Olympics, but was they a did big it. Deal and thank she you. She really ruled, and that was the beginning of Posh's reign, I think. Yeah, I mean, I suppose as a as a phenomena, I think that timing was perfect because of the whole Cool Britannia thing. And mm. Ginger wore the Union Jack dress that yes. became so iconic. It was and Damien then, Hurst. And then it they was... released the movie Spice World with the double-decker Union Jack bus. Yeah. I mean, it was a, it was all very 60s retro, yep. you know, Cool Britannia kind of thing. I mean, it was just perfect, right? It was what everybody wanted at that moment. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's the Spice Girls. Um, okay, so uh, time to take another break. Yes. Time for another 
trivia question. Yes. Okay. So, have you seen Spice World the movie? Not all the way through. <laughs> Blake is nodding like he's going to Hey, the thing off. about these feature movies, because I think any super band needs to have a movie, sure. and it doesn't have to Yellow be good. Yellow Submarine, I want to hold be, your hand. Well, actually, they have, the, the Beatles ones were really good. But anyway, I think the movie should be bad. And Spice World d is no exception. They lived up to that expectation Spice for you. Spice World is packed with these amazing celebrity cameos. Oh. However, <gasps> one pop star's cameo had to be cut out before the film's release. Oh, why? You know who it was? You're listening to the Wow Report on Radio Andy Sirius XM. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Welcome back to the Wow Report. This week we're counting down the top 10 girl bands of all time that make us go wow. wow. I'm Fender Bailey, co founder of World of Wonder. I'm here with Jane St. James, Tom Campbell, Blake. Hi, everybody. Hi. So, okay, so the question was Spice World. We're talking about the Spice Girls. And uh, Spice World was their sort of a uh, fab prefab pop awful movie uh -huh. and it was filled with celebrity cameos but one of them had to be cut out before the film's release. I'm thinking it would be somebody who passed away. Did anybody die around 1999 or well, 2000? that's a good uh, James? Well, I, a lot who, of people died. Did, did, <laughs> who was the guy that asphyxiated himself? Oh, oh, oh no, 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 no! It wouldn't be because he uh, was Hutchins. Uh, Michael Hutchins. I'm just trying. I'm, just trying. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm James? just trying. James, I have a funny Michael Hutchins story. I'll tell you. Later. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> That's for another show. <laughs> um, I'm gonna say it was somebody who was like too fucked up or something at the time, and maybe it was like Robbie Williams who was all drunk. Or... I'm surprised you don't know this. I'm not gonna shame you, but it uh, it was Gary Glitter. Oh, he, he was he had in... a big four minute role in the movie but unfortunately uh, he had been a diddling little girl yes. oh, 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 oh. and they thought they had to cut it out well uh, cut that it was out, probably Gary. good thinking yeah probably and you're right power. someone did die uh who was mentioned to two people actually uh princess die and uh, versace oh. that was in 99 yeah, that was 97 was when that all Versace. Oh. I, was, I was just making up a time period okay. i don't know exactly oh, yeah. but, but no die didn't die did you Princess Diana died. I, think she, she I don't died, think she's very, she's very sick, at least. I know that much. She's, I very, very she's doing very well. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go on with the cat. Oh. We're at number seven. <laughs> what are we at number seven? No, four. we're not at number seven. We're number four. I don't know why they give me this job. I'm going to get fired. Number four. Number four, <laughs> The Supremes. Oh. Now, oh. if I were in control of the world or the show, they would be number one, but because they're my number I one, think you they know might that. Be, you know we're that. Going to talk about the Supremes. But the the Supremes uh, were not the first girl group. <clears throat> they are not the last girl group. But I would say that they are the most influential. That the their music is perfection in the '60s, which is my favorite decade to talk about and think about, because every year something changed. Hairstyles changed, colors changed, the thickness of lapels, the, the height of skirts, up, down, all this kind of stuff. And the Supremes, like the Beatles, lived through all of that. They had their first hit in 64, they broke up in 70, much like the Beatles. Um, and the Beatles dominated, but the Supremes, which were American made, made mm. in America, Donald mm. Trump, and are from the part of, the, are the queens of, the jewel in the crown of the Motown legacy, which is an amazing, so many of those artists, some came from other places, but most of them came from that neighborhood, from the Detroit, Michigan, all that talent was there, and Barry Gordy had the foresight to put them together and to create music by black people for everyone. Kind of amazing thing. And Diana Ross with her crossover appeal, which, you know, now, is, since the Supremes, you know, you don't have to, you know, white people like more authentic black sounding, but Diana Ross had this beautiful voice and this charisma and this drive that was uh, undeniable and I always I, I didn't know about the Supremes until sort of like the late 70s because I just wasn't old enough but I got the the Supremes anthology it was a three record set and I just started playing it over and over and over again I had it on tape I used to work at the summer job where I had to mop floors as part of it and I would just play that I'd be so happy mopping the floor their music is huh. incredible um, and it started off as kind of bebop you know girl group Holland Dozier Holland right. and they left and then they, they like the Beatles it was sort of like they would try to like they're trying to keep up so it was like electronica of like reflections and then social consciousness of love child about being, you know, and then, you know, so their music's amazing, but also the legend and the, the you know, the idea that at one point in 67, they kicked Flo out of the group. I mean, they made the movie Dream Girls, which is largely right. about the Supremes because it's such an epic kind of operatic t tale. In Dream Girls, Effie comes back and she's on top of it again. In real life, 
Florence left, married Barry Gordy chauffeur, chauffeur, and ended up dying of something, you know, bl- blood clot or something in '74. And Dinah Ross went to that funeral. I remember seeing the thing in ermine. Like she was just, she just went to the funeral in black, but people booed her because, <gasps> you know, because well, Florence was dead and Dinah mm. Ross. But she and and Dinah and, and, and the Supremes went on after Dinah Ross. I, yeah. I can't. I'm sorry, but they and and they had it. Yes. Their their first single, "Up the Ladder to the Roof," with Gene Terrell huh. as a lead singer, was number was like number ten. And Dinah Ross's first single reach out and touch somebody's hand was number 20. Uh-huh. There was a moment when it could have all gone the other way. See, my sort of awareness of Supremes as a kid really began with post-Diana Ross with Floyd Joy. I love that song. Floyd, Floyd, Floyd. That Floyd the, Joy. The Supremes ding, 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 after Diana Ross were, were bigger in England than they were in America. Yeah, They had a few hits. But... Um, but Diana Ross had the solo career because also the '60s was all about kind of like girl groups and boy groups, and it was about street, you know, that sort of street corner singing from the '50s that grew up. Mm. And in the '70s, it became about Diana Ross, well, Barbara Streisand. You know, everyone was singular and, and Donna I mean, Summer. Elton John. That's my thing about the Springs is I always felt looking back at the. I mean, I love you in the conference room I, in a meeting. I play so much You Dinah love Ross. to play Supreme stuff, yeah. and and Rue obviously is also a huge yes. Supremes fan. So I hesitate to even say this, but to me, it always seemed, looking back at those clips, yep. so obvious that Diana Ross was just going to shove everybody else <laughs> out of the way and that she was destined for a, a solo career. And I, I suppose, I, I mean, I just think that's sort of... Well, it's Isn't it because I grew up, I, I'm, a, I'm a little younger than you, just, just by a hair. <laughs> and so my first memory of Diana Ross is Mahogany and Touch, and Touch Me in the Morning yep. and all of those yeah, songs. Right. And so I never knew that the Supremes even existed. I always thought that it was just Diana Ross. And then I found out she had a, a former career with a bunch of girls. Like, I didn't know any of that. And so it wasn't until I was like 13 that I started going back and realizing. And what a treasure trove. Because in yeah. the early 80s, uh, it was the movie in the late 70s or early 80s, um, uh, 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 it was about the funeral. It was the, it was the yuppies coming together for the oh, funeral. Um, Peter's the friends. Big chill. The, the Big, big chill. chill. The Big Chill had a whole Motown soundtrack in the '80s, and it totally introduced my generation huh. in America back to, mm. to Motown. And that's and and the last thing I'll say is the Supremes. You know, I hate when they break up, but Diana Ross had such a single career; she was kind of destined. When you look back, she was destined to be the solo mm-hmm. one. Right. You know, Mary Wilson complains a lot. There's some great clips. There's a clip from 2000 when Mary Wilson bashed Diana Ross. Uh, for 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 being cruel to her and not giving her enough money to go on a reun- reunion tour, and uh, Diana Ross went on TV the next day with Barbara Walters and explained her side of it. And it was a vulnerable moment for Diana Ross because she's kind of like, you know, everyone is trying to take away what is rightfully Diana Ross's, and she was just kind of like, that's my voice on those records, you know, like I was part of it. Like like mm. the people want to like, play. she was all you know studio made or Barry Gordy liked her too much. It's like no, that girl delivered. Do you remember that um, Gene Simmons w- yes. came in and told us that amazing story about because he dated Diana Ross in, for a while. in the seventies, yeah, the late seventies. You could never figure that one out. Well, he has a long tongue, but um, <laughs> she was single. She was dating him. She was about to leave Motown, or she was leaving Motown. Right. She'd been under Barry Gordy's wing as a mentor, as a lover at one time. He's the father of her first daughter. And she went into Barry, um, Diana went into Gene Simmons' house, and he had all these platinum Kiss albums. Record. Yeah. Records. And she's like, wow, look at all those. He goes, well, you must have so many. This is like Diana Ross after Hedge. She goes, no, because I guess Barry never signed up for the record association. So she I, never had a gold record, so, like in her possession. So Gene Simmons, unbeknownst to Diana, went out and had it all calculated and had all of the gold and platinum singles and albums that Diana Ross did and he brought her home on Fifth Avenue they had a place he brought her home they opened the doors and it was covered huh isn't that and she just broke down because that's according to Gene Simmons he told us this story yeah makes you cry anyway Supremes (sighs) Diana Ross forever well I I can't top that I can't number three I've got harsh. <laughs> Heart is amazing. Tell me about Heart. Whatever. Oh, God. Heart is amazing. <laughs> no, 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 Heart really is amazing. Um, Heart is, uh, it, it, they're so interesting to me because they, they, there were two, actually two, like, two, it was like two different bands, right? We'll, yep. we'll, we'll get into that, but it's two sisters, Anna and Nancy Wilson. It was the first concert I ever went to. It was, um, there was a naked lady standing behind me. It was the first time I ever saw boobs Why in real life. Naked? Just because it was like the 70s, you know, everyone was like, happy. 
party yeah. vibe, right? Um, they, they did this sort of like acoustic folk rock, but really great harmonies. They were really yeah. fantastic with their harmonies. Uh, their first album, Dreamboat Annie, came out in 1976. It was only released in Canada, but um, their singles, Crazy on You and Magic Man. Ooh, ooh, Magic try Man. to understand. Try, try to understand. understand. Try, try, try to understand. He's Magic Man. Anyway, <laughs> they, they became hits in America, and so they, they, were, they got a distribution deal in America. They went on to sell a million copies. Um, there was, uh, at the time, they were in an ad in Rolling Stones, and it was a very se- sexy picture. Uh-huh. They had their bare shoulders, and they were back-to-back, and the tagline said, uh, it was our first time. And w- very like provocative, like, what does that even mean? Yeah. What is that about? And they were touring, and a, a, a reporter went backstage and insinuated that the sisters were actually lovers as well. Oh. And Ooh. they were so Ooh. furious about that. There was an article that came out about it that Anne went home, went, went to her hotel room, and wrote, Ooh, Barracuda! Arguably their biggest hit. And that was because that there had been this incest rumor about the two of them, which I had never known until last night when That's I was discovering an amazing story right then then in 1978 there was Dog and Butterfly if uh-huh. you remember then in 80 there was uh, Baby Lestrange was their album and I had a cat named Baby Lestrange which I, I didn't even remember that, that that that's probably why it was named that um, uh, <laughs> then things started to go tank they, well, they went south MTV came into place and now it was a different kind of artist and heart kind of faded away they were kind of a relic of the 70s they, they were they, they were out of fashion they were a little frumpy they, yep. didn't, they, they couldn't get a hit to save their life until 1985 rolls around, yeah. and they uh, have an 80s makeover yep. in which it's like leather and lace big and hair. big hair, <laughs> and they change their music, and they have like, it's like now they're like doing that sort of uh, like rock, what, 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 like Def Leppard yes. and things. And like, it, what about love? What about love? And <laughs> These Dreams. These Dreams is the best song what, it, it Literally, ever. it was on MTV in this constant whole, rotation. And the big thing about that was, didn't Nancy take who was the lead singer normally? Oh, it was, uh, it was Anne. It was Anne, and then Nancy, Nancy did What About Love, or, or, or These Dreams, and, she and it became, it. I think, their biggest seller of and all time. And then from that point on, it was always about the, and they, the, these girls kept getting bigger. And <laughs> One big. of them did. Anne kept getting bigger and bigger. Get and, line, Anne. Uh, uh-huh, and <laughs> the, it went from, like, these fabulous, like, dance numbers and on stage and stuff to literally you only saw Anne from here up yes. in the videos. It was very sad. So their second fame was bigger than their first fame. Their fame, second fame yes. was yeah. huge. Was also fueled by MTV. I just have right. to say the one image from the These Dreams video I remember, which was a, a, a go to in videos, was about dreams, right? It was surreal. And so there were like hands coming out of the floor. Oh, <laughs> well, Olivia Newton John used that too, right? That the hands well, coming the, out of the floor. That's um, um, a trope of early music videos. Yes. What is it? Repulsion or whatever? What's the Catherine Deneuve Roman Polanski movie mm. where she's running through the hallway and the hands are coming is at her? Is that where it's. Oh, yeah, we that, need to make what, a music video that has hands coming out of the floor. <laughs> anyway, it's sort of an interesting they broke up and they came back together a million times they broke up a million times and blah 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 after that and then um nancy went off to uh she had she was married to uh somebody very famous a, a pr- director uh, of the guy cameron crow cameron, cameron crow yeah she, she married cameron oh. crow and she ended up uh, doing the soundtracks for jerry Maguire, almost oh. famous vanilla sky they're amazingly oh talented God. yeah and, and and women that uh, you don't feel like they compromise with the exception of maybe a bustier in a couple of videos in the 80s they were powerful women who yeah seem to control their own destiny i really like them yeah uh, yeah uh, uh, yet they toured as recently as 2016 mm-hmm. but as of april 2017 and said heart is on hiatus but of course, as with the, these acts and all these acts, you can get tunes on iTunes. Yes, live forever. Number two. I cannot top that, James. I have a uh, number two. I have I'm tattoo. Sweaty. I have I, I, I <laughs> tattoo. Okay, who oh. remembers tattoo? Are they the I Russian know. group? Who are yes. they? <laughs> well, here's the first. You're I, so I, topical. You're so topical. <laughs> You're so trendy. Uh, I wonder if really they even count because. There's only two of them. And don't no, you feel a girl doesn't. group needs to be more than well, well, hot? Well, yeah. I, uh, I'm sure. Anyway, the, the calling card. What? No, 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 no you were actually right. <laughs> I know. because Okay, well, let's cross it off the list. Let's, no, no, let's cross hard off the list. two or more gathered there. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Anyway, the selling point for Tattoo, the, these Russian girls from nowhere, basically, because, you know, Russia is not known as the fount of pop, <laughs> is it? I mean, yeah. I'm trying to think, actually, of any other <laughs> Russian pop. I act. just know of the guy whose father uh, called Donald 
Jake oh, Trump right, yeah. Jr. and send it up. There's some pop, oh, pop oh, history oh, there. Oh, but anyway. oh, Pussy Riot, of course. <laughs> oh, yes. Pussy yeah, yeah. Riot. Uh-huh. Anyway, anyway, Tattoo, their calling card was that in the video, they were dressed in schoolgirl uniforms, kissing in the rain. So they were lesbians. And this was, this sort of it's was It's all like, the hook you needed. That was all they needed. <laughs> and uh, the was song was... Time. <laughs> <laughs> the single was uh, All the Things She Said. And it's very... All the things she said, all the things she said, running through my head. Right? I mean, it's very minimal. Let's yep. say minimal. <laughs> That's fair. And um, it, it just did really well for them. Uh, tattoo consists of Julia Volkova and Lena Katina. And well, now, did, do you think that mm. they helped or hindered the LGBTQ movement? Well, here's a good question. Thank you, James. I'm <laughs> glad you're here. I mean, you just somebody was, uh, here, set for you up somebody and was here for the pre-interview. Uh, I set him up and you <laughs> knock him down, baby. Uh. Because <laughs> recently, because I was like, where are they now? You know, uh-huh. typing in my Google search. And uh, let's see, Natalia recently went on Russian TV and said that if she had a gay son she would not love him and would condemn him because, quote, Uh, God created man for procreation. It is the nature. What? How? And then she said, a man has no right to be a fag. Isn't that sad? What? And of course, the girls were faking it, being lesbians. They weren't really lesbians. And you know what? It gets even worse because she actually does, she actually has a son uh, called Sami, Samir, sorry, who's now 11. So, um, Good luck, Samir. S- she, right? did say, she did say that being gay is still better than murderers, being a murderer, drug oh. addict, or thief. <laughs> oh, God. So, so really, but here's actually why I wanted to talk about Tattoo, is because they were produced by uh, Trevor Horn. Oh. And Trevor Horn buggles. And Art of Radio Noise. Art of Noise. Yeah, Frankie yeah. Goes to Hollywood. Yeah. Dollar. Live Aid. I mean... You know, to me, he's not the fat controller in this case because he just produced these bands, but he really shaped the sound and he is he is the sort of the mastermind behind it. And oh by well, the way, why don't why didn't they have any mm. of the, the talent or the likability or the, the, the pop was, was, of any of the other things that he was, did? Why would he choose them? It, it actually the single is fantastic. Is and it? it is a masterpiece of production. It's 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 really good. It's not as it's not like, you know, his Malcolm McLaren, Duck Rock stuff. It's not as good as everything else. But Wait, did he do Man and Butterflies? Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. So I think moving forward, we have to screen Fenton's choices more carefully. <laughs> this tattoo thing is really bumming me oh, out. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there is a little bit of comeuppance because Lena had uh, thyroid cancer and the surgery, uh, she says they damaged her throat so she can't sing anymore. So well, good she, for that. So shouldn't <laughs> have stopped her based on yeah. the first single. Okay. Now I'm going out against that. We have to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll reveal the number one girl group that makes us go. Wow. wow. So Wow Report Radio Andy, Sirius XM. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Welcome back to the Wow Report. We're counting down top 10 girl groups of all time that make us go wow. We've reached that point. It's time for, and I can get this number right, number one. (laughs) Number one. Well, I just think by sheer sales, by the power. Wait a minute, because because there there, there, there are many options here. Let's go through our list of of who we forgot. En Vogue, Expose. TLC. TLC. Uh, just it's so many of the mind starts to the, the Maguire sisters uh, the, the Andrew oh, sisters the oh, Lennon Andrew sisters the Lennon sisters Pussy Riot for goodness sake Pussy, Pussy Riot. Riot but I, I think we can agree without too much controversy right. it's the number Runnets. one is Destiny's Child <laughs> Ronettes are good too Destiny's uh, Child of course it's Destiny's Child right oh, t- to me the, the thing that separates them from all of them and again I think all of the girl groups we talked about lent to them especially the Supremes there wouldn't necessarily be a Beyonce with Anna Ross but Beyonce and Destiny's Child sort of became the Michael Jackson of girl groups. You know what I'm saying? They, they defy, they weren't girl, they, they were feminine and sexy, mm. but they were also powerful and they ruled the world. They were, I don't know, they, they, they were so, help me out here, but I mean, I think Well, I was gonna say, don't you think they're in a way the successors or heirs of Diana Ross and the Supremes? I mean, 
they and learned they from. Yes. Yes. yes, they learned from and built upon and evolved it. But to then a they new... fell into the same trap as. Which, what, what, oh, really? Well, but I think that. Well, no, but with Beyonce leaving and going on and having her Diana but, Ross has career. But it was it was handled. The breakup was handled a, in a much more yes, yes. Uh, loving loving way. They've reunited at the Super Bowl. They're still friends. They're friends. Yes, yes. there was so pain, there was but not lesson. lasting toxicity. Right? Yes. It's interesting to me though, of just Beyonce's career. Uh, they're, they defined the 90s. They went on, and Beyonce defined the t- the, the aughts yeah. and the teens. Like, she has had a career that's that's as long as, you know, anybody in pop history. You can't. We were in Palm mm. Springs uh, several years ago walking mm. down the street, and we were just like, let's name all the, the songs that Beyonce and Destiny's Child did. And it's, it's endless. Yeah. You can't, like, reach, like, because usually people have, like, Eight hits or ten hits well, or twelve wait, hits. You know, listen, even Madonna though went from eighty four to two thousand and two. Probably was her last big hit. Yeah. And Beyonce, but yes, hung up two thousand five. But go on, hung, hung up two thousand five. <laughs> but literally, Beyonce has actually surpassed Madonna in huh. yes. in longevity uh, because Beyonce is is having is having her career peak now. Right. You well, know, she theoretically, has, she's, she's no, no, she hasn't even peaked. No, she knows, but, she knows no signs. But Madonna, exactly. twenty five years in, twenty years in. Wasn't the powerhouse she was in the eighties and nineties? But it all started with Beyonce with, with yeah. Destiny's but, Child. But Beyonce in her third decade is is stronger than she's ever been. But it's because Destiny's Child is one of the. It's like a girl group. They were like teenagers. They were driven by their mother, driven by their father. Right. They cut off. You know, Latoya Luckett, who was the other. Like there were a couple that were like stripped off. Oh. And, and oh. so the final three that made it. Because what was that first video? Do you remember who was? It? There was four Destiny's Childs in that. Well, actually, there was one. There was Latoya Luckett and another girl. Yeah. I forgot her name. But then that girl left, and Farrah Franklin came in. That's right. No, both of them left, and they had two new girls. And then both of them, no, then Farrah <laughs> left, and it just became Michelle. It's very cute. You know, Michelle, can you handle this? Michelle, Kelly, Kelly and Beyonce. Can you handle this, Beyonce? Can you handle this? So we feel, I guess, I'm not feeling passion from anyone on no, this No, I mean, no, I'm thinking that actually it's, it's, it's not so much – it, for me, it's not about passion; it's about recognition. I mean, they just—they just are undeniably yeah. massive, and I, I'm just always so intrigued by the way that the, the the tension between the girl group and then the the star that evolves, the single star that evolves, because yes. it is a natural evolution. You know, you, you, uh, at first I was saying, oh well, you know, Diana Ross was bound to push all the others out of the way, but in this case, this, it it was her destiny to evolve beyond it, don't you think? And, and it's so. It's so Destiny, interesting. Beyond, Beyonce, Destiny's Child. But, see, Beyonce a, being a huge solo hit was her Destiny Child. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Thank recycling you. Uh, old RuPaul's Drag Race jokes. <laughs> well, that's all the time we have today. This was fascinating. I think <laughs> we really, we really, this is a definitive <laughs> list. We really said it all. But if, if there is somebody, because we, we are on the YouTube uh, channel, Wow Presents. Yes. If, and, you know, you're, you're also free already to leave your comments. But if you have a great girl group yeah. or a great video, you know, list it. Tell us who you love and why. This was our list, and we are so sorry we and left out so many. And where would they tell us that? Uh, well, at worldofwonder.net slash Radio Andy. We can get you there, or you can just Google on WoW Presents uh, the WoW Report on, on our on YouTube channel. We don't have a comment section. We do on the YouTube. Oh. oh. Well, there we go. <sighs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say yeah. this. Throw on your high heels and meet us at the first ever RuPaul's Drag Con, New York City, September 9th and 10th at the Javits Center. For more information and to see what queens and celebrities are scheduled to appear, go to rupaulsdragcon.com. Hurry, VIP tickets for RuPaul's DragCon NYC are already sold out, but you can still get weekend passes, single day tickets, and tickets to both the nine from nine party on Friday and September 8th, and the Battle on the Runway Party on Saturday, September 9th, all at RuPaul'sDragCon.com. RuPaul's Drag Race Revealed, Season 9 on Logo, every Thursday at 8 p.m. Oh, Sunday nights, HGTV, two brand new episodes of Island Hunters at 10 p.m. I love Island uh, Hunters you want so to just much. Buy uh. Island, right. Thanks for tuning in to the WOW Report on Radio Andy Sirius XM. Listen anytime on the Sirius Radio app or watch us fool around on the WOW Report. <laughs> um, hey, same time, same place next week, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. We'll be here. Until then, go out and do something that makes the world go WOW! wow!